Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Coming to you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Well, today we are going to be talking about our lawn. As you know, this summer has been quite brutal for our lawns from the high heat, the temperatures, to the lack of rain. Many of our lawns are not looking quite as green and lush as we would like them to be, mine included. So to join us today and talk about our lawns and what we can do to prep for some seed this fall, I have Scott Ateo with Greens Masters Lawn and Pest Service. Without further ado, let's get Scott on to join us. Hi, Scott. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. How's it going? I'm fantastic. How are you doing today? Doing good. Good. You are out on the road. You are servicing our lawns, mine included, today. Yep, today. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and um, I know this has been a, a, a brutal summer, right, for the lawns. I just mentioned with the, with the heat, with the lack of the rain. And unless you want to spend hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars watering, um, maybe your lawn is looking like mine, which is a little bit on the brown side and maybe not quite as green and beautiful as we would like it to look. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, but you're going to talk to us today about what we can do because we we can, you know, if our lawn takes a little bit of heat, so to speak, this summer, there are things we can do in the fall to help it recover, repair, and be ready again for the next spring. Oh, we got some, some of your fans are on, says you're the best grass guy around and that you are. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Oh, so, um, so grass seed. That's something that we can do. We can seed our lawns, um, but I know as you've advised me, it's best to wait until fall, correct? What what would constitute correct. fall? Is it the date on the calendar? Is there something, um, you know, when should we consider fall as far as, you know, when we should be doing the steps you're going to be giving to us today? So fall constitutes basically the change, not the calendar date, but the change in weather conditions that are best for seed. So a little bit cooler weather, 70s, even high 70s is fine, and Mother Nature is starting to provide rain. That usually happens right about the end of the first week of September or even the middle of September. That is almost always, you know, you know how weather is in Michigan, sure. but it is <laughs> almost always the best time to start seeding at that time because you usually get about a good three months before the snow hits and the temperatures hit that are cold enough to stop grass from actually growing. So you get a good three months of grass germination and growth before it hits in the winter. And so that makes fall ideal, especially in Michigan, to plant grass seed in. Okay. So pay attention to the weather. And when we start to see, you know, the intensity, I guess, of the heat start to, to drop off a little bit and those temps stay in the 70s, that is, that's going to be a better time for us to, to do the seed. Now, what would be a reason not to do grass seeding right now? I'm, I'm in the studio right now and someone here said she was advised, not by a professional, but you know, to do grass seeding right now, you have to hurry up and do it right now. But what would be a reason that now is not ideal with, with it still being in the prime of summer, the heat, why is now not ideal to try and seed your lawn? Well, you said it yourself, it's heat. Yeah. Um, even if you are able to dump water on it especially this year when we have i mean we've had a couple of nice days of rain finally but we've had one of the longest hottest droughts in michigan history this year this has never happened in my lifetime that i can ever remember not even close and you're, there's no way that anybody should ever try to spend the amount of money that it would take to actually get seed to grow now if it's a small area and you can get that keep that area watered yourself more than once a day so it's got to be a couple of times a day at this point because mm -hmm. when you're hit 90 degrees with no rain soil is drying out within a couple of hours of being watered oh. and that seed really needs a chance to germinate and, and come up before heat starts affecting it um also it's not just that you want to water the seed you've also got to water the grass as it begins to sprout so for a full six weeks so you've got if you're using good grass seed kentucky bluegrass and rice is ideal for michigan if you're using good grass seed that's a 14 to 28 germinate day germination period, which means that you've got to water the seed before it ever even starts coming up for 14 to 28 days. And then you've got to water it another six weeks after that and keep okay. it well watered to keep it coming up. So right now is the worst time of year to, to start seeding. Well, right. If you haven't been able to keep up on the watering in the, in with the existing lawn um, seed that takes even more, this, 
you know, it's it's not going to be ideal for for you to do that as well. Correct. Right? Yep. Yep. So, okay, so we're going to wait till fall. We're going to wait until the temperatures are in the 70s. Things have cooled off a little bit. We're starting to see a little relief as far as this heat. Um, what What is the first thing we should do when it comes to seeding our lawn? Well, first first thing to do is make sure what you're actually seeding. Now, if you've got large bare spots, that's a totally different type of seed than if you've got some thin areas that you just want to repair, especially thin areas from summer that got damaged. Mm -hmm. Um, more than likely, if you're very, very heat stressed and heat damaged at this time of year, not only are you not watering enough, but more importantly, you probably have almost all of the finer grasses. Um, some of the hardier grasses with the rain that we've had recently are already recovering. And if it's still looking really brown, it's because you have a finer blend of grass that cannot take the type of temperatures that we've had. Okay. Um, if that's the case, you need to pay attention to what your lawn's actually doing right now, and you want to go ahead and go with a hardier stock. So a sun and shade mix in Michigan is always going to be best, um, but you want to go with a heavier bluegrass if, if you're experiencing a lot of, a lot of heat stress. Ryegrass is nice as a fill-in, um, but you want to go with heavier summer strains of bluegrass. Okay. So it's really important to get the right grass seed down and recognize what you're actually doing because it takes a lot more grass seed to fill in a bare spot than it does to just generally fill in a lawn um, from summer stress. Okay. All right. So we want to make sure that we are you take a look at the current situation so that we can make the right choices as far as the seed and filling in. Um, what else? What else should we be doing to prepare for seeding this fall? Well, make sure your sprinklers are on point okay. if they haven't if they haven't already been adjusted for the year. Um, so again, we got a, we got a good month before that's going to happen. But uh, okay. you're also if you're going to do a general overseeding, even for a sandy lawn, you should you should be aerating that lawn okay. before seeding. Um, for bare spots, you should actually be using soil, topsoil to go over the bare spots. Aerating is not going to help with large bare areas. It'll help a little bit, but is not going to, do, to provide the proper seed bed. So if you've got a large bare area, in other words, anything bigger than a dinner plate, you probably ought to add a little bit of topsoil, um, half an inch to two inches deep, depending on what you're looking at, and then seed over top of that. Okay, all right, so we wanna make sure we're taking a look at our lawn and, and you know, where maybe we had some of the finer, finer grass and make sure we're putting something thicker in, do some aeration. So that is just where Correct. you come through and, you know, you have parts of, right, it digs down into the, into the soil a little bit and, and pull some of it out so it allows access right for the water that's, and the dirt. That's correct. And that's why it's called core aerating. So it's different than the guys riding around with little spikes on the back of their tractors. That is not aerating. Um, yes, you're, you're helping loosen the soil a little bit, but it's not the same as a core aeration. A core aeration goes, goes about, about two inches deep usually, mm -hmm. and it pulls out what looks like a really small apple core all over the lawn, and yep. that decompresses the soil and allows seed to get into those holes. And But more importantly, it also allows water to get in there and hit the root system and the new seed and be able to ha hold there, um, so then providing a nice seed bed for it. Okay, so aeration is a very important step. And if you haven't had your lawn, have a core aeration done, um, you'll know if you have, because you look at your lawn and you think, did somebody let their dog loose? Because at first it looks like, you know, or you have- geese. Yeah, or geese, <laughs> right. right. But it's oh. just the dirt from, from below. So, so you want to make sure that you aerate it. Um, you, and then you had said, if we have larger areas that are larger than a dinner plate that we should also be putting one to two inches of topsoil down um, prior to putting the seed That's down. Right. So that what that gives the, the seed something to, to hold on to, to what's to that? actually drill its way in. Okay. So seed is, is really, it's genetically, it's an astounding thing. Grass seed has a microscopic hair on the tip of it. Um, so it actually drills its way into the soil. Now, if it's heavy clay or it's too compact, even really compact sand, it's going to have a much harder time actually getting down in there. So if you give it some nice loose soil, it will drill its way in. And, and by the way, when you're doing this, do not put hay or straw and don't even mix the seed in the soil. Leave it right on top. Okay. If you do that, seed will germinate itself faster than if you cover it because it's already got the sunlight. So it's going to try to protect okay. itself from the sunlight. It will drill its way into the soil. It'll germinate faster and far better on its own than if you try to help it along other than okay. with water. So now what about like, because, you know, we've all seen the lawns that the seed, you know, areas and then that the hay or the straw on top. What is a reason, you know, I know you said that it's, we get direct access to the sun and it'll be quicker, but are there any other reasons not to put the, the straw or the hay on top of the seed? 
Yes. Yeah. The biggest reason is going to be that hay and straw always come with hay seed. Even the best stuff that you can buy. Now, there are some that have been sterilized, but there really is no point you're wasting your money. Just put the seed on top of the ground. But the biggest reason, you do not want all the contaminant seeds that are in that straw to go into your new grass. Otherwise, you end up with a bunch of hay, tall fescue, barnyard grass, barn meadow grass, okay. timothy, and a whole bunch of other stuff <laughs> that are we, involved we with don't hay want. cutting. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, what about those who have said, but I have to put it down because if I just leave the seed, the birds are going to come and eat it. Does that happen? Very untrue. Okay. No, it, it does. Look, there's there's a couple of smaller birds that do eat seed. They will never eat enough to make a difference on the amount of seed that you put down as long as you're putting it down heavy. Um, for the most part, if the birds are there, it's because you have bare areas and they can easily see and hear the worms crawling through the soil there. Um, and you're keeping it really well watered so the worms are coming up to the surface. It's prime feeding. Most birds that are accessing those areas are predator birds and they are not eating the seed. Okay. All right. So good to know. So you don't need to, to, to go and do the extra step or the extra cost or, or anything of putting the seed or, or I'm sorry, the, the hay or the straw down. Right. Just, just put the seed on directly and then make sure you're watering it, right? I, I believe Correct. you said yep. we have to water for how long do we need to be watering this new seed in order to make sure that it has that opportunity to, you know, connect with the soil? 15 to 20 minutes in the morning, each okay. morning. And uh, usually you want to go somewhere between 3 and 6 p.m., the hottest part of the day, the warmest part of the day, and just give it a five-minute sprinkle. Okay. Um, that five minutes is not enough to cool on top of the seed. It's just long enough to cool the soil temperature down and keep it a little bit damp for going into the evening time. Okay. All right. Well, this is great information. Um, is you know, as far as what we need to do to our lawns to help fill in those bare spots, or maybe we have some larger areas. I think there's going to be a lot more people this season. Like you said, we've never seen these temperatures like this in our lifetimes. Um, and so there's, there's probably going to be quite a few people that, that need to do this process. If you have any questions, um, you can definitely contact, put your questions in on this post. Um, you know, or contact Scott directly at Greens Masters. Um, but anything else that, that we should know, anything else you want to leave us with as far as preparing for grass seed this fall? Yes, uh, okay. two things. Number okay. one, for the soil. Make sure you're reading the ingredients on the soil bag. Don't get any cheap soils because okay. they always come with really nasty weeds okay. um, and heavy concentrations of clay as well. Um, so if you want to go, my go-to, not to pitch them, I'm not getting paid, but miracle Grow topsoil is the best out there that I have found. It is pure topsoil. Okay. Um, but read the back of the bags. If it says anything about peat moss being mixed into it, because um, there are things called lawn soil or garden soil, those are not good for your lawn, believe it or not, despite the name lawn soil. Yeah. There is a large yeah. amount of peat moss. Peat moss is ground up debris which includes wood chips and sticks. That is not good growing no, material for grass. No. So you want pure topsoil. Um, Michigan peats can be mixed in, and that's good. Um, okay. So that is a swamp silt. Um, the other thing to make sure that you're doing is reading the back of the seed bags. They all have the ingredients in them. You want to avoid anything that says creeping red fescue okay. or tall fescue. Okay. You're looking for very high concentrations and almost exclusive concentrations of bluegrass and rye for Michigan lawns. Okay. Unless, of course, you have you're one of the one of the few that has an actual tall fescue lawn, in which case you probably ought to go to a rain elevator and ask for tall fescue. But if you've got a regular sodded lawn in Michigan, you do not want tall fescue in it. So okay. it's uh, very specific, and you can always call and ask what type of grass you have and send pictures. Okay. So just like, you know, we check the, the ingredients of the food products that we are purchasing, you need to make sure you do it for your lawn as well, because that makes sense. If it has ingredients in there, um, you know, if it, that don't work well with growing your lawn or your lawn type or um, you know, that could actually cause some problems. You know, like you said, if it has some of the the weeds mixed in, that's not going to help us while we might. I, I know just from all the rain we've gotten in my flower beds, um, you know, the weeds, they, they don't need any help. So <laughs> no, <laughs> they do well all on their own without yeah, us. All on their own. So we definitely don't want to be, you know, providing them with rich soil and plenty of water. So <laughs> you 
Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us and provide that fantastic information. Um, you know, if you're watching this and you need to do, you know, seeding of your lawn, you might want to replay it. Take down some notes as to the, the types of grass seed you should be looking for and the timing. Um, and if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can contact Scott directly or through me and we'll be happy to get you the information that you're looking for. So thank you again for joining us, Scott. Thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And we'll see you next time on Tea with Tracy.